at first I said, and I actually tweeted this. Yes. I said, okay, I, I agree that Wayne should be performing at the Super Bowl in New Orleans as well. But to be fair, have you ever seen a performer that was tied to the city where the Super Bowl was happening and people responded and said, Dr. Dre in L.A.? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot so about that. So that did happen? That did happen. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, when Dr. Dre performed the Super Bowl, it was in Los Angeles. Yes. So, yeah, there are times where the city is tied to the performer. Yes. Recently. Yes. So we can't say, well, these things kind of don't coincide because they do. So there's that. Now, Drake, and this is going around the internet as well, was allegedly offered the Super Bowl four times and he turned it down every time. Hmm. That's not a surprise, as big as Drake is. Yes. Think about it. Drake is an international yes. megastar. Yes. So why would they not want yes. that? And you know, you know what's interesting is um, you know, Tommy Davidson went over this in our interview a while back. Up until what was it, like the 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 mid late eighties, the Super Bowl halftime show was just a throwaway. Yes. In fact, the last time that they didn't take it seriously, they had a Elvis impersonator mm -hmm. performing. Mm -hmm. And in Living Color, which was the hottest show at the time, they decided to really go left field and say, hey, we're going to have an in, you know, in Living Color special during the Super Bowl halftime show and even showed a little countdown yes. at the, the right-hand corner so people could jump back and not miss the show. Right. And I believe that that year they had better ratings than the Super Bowl halftime show. Yes. And what did the Super Bowl do after that? Michael Jackson. <laughs> and the rest was history. The rest was history. I saw that article. Yeah. I saw the interview with yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, it's true. And, you know, like I was telling you, Keenan's nice, man. And the people he worked with, the, the, the I'd say his offensive coordinators, just to put it in those terms, you mm -hmm. know, they were nice, man. They thought of that concept. And it was it was bonanza, you know. It changed. It changed. I mean, he's made corporate America, you know, a yeah. trillion dollars, trillions, easy, easily. Okay, you see that thing with the West Coast thing at the Rams game? Was that nice? Yeah, that was a result of what 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 we, what Keenan thought of. You know, it was a result. And 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 here here with my, you know, hard ass head. You know, I'm thinking I'm not being treated fairly, right? Like I need more sketches on the show and this, that, and the other thing. And here come the Super Bowl thing, you know, and, you know, I, I want to be doing something in this thing, man. I'm going to say something, you know what I mean? So Keenan comes in, you know, and Keenan, you know, Keenan's, Keenan's, Keenan's the man. Keenan's like, okay, so here we go. And we were, we were, we were teammates. So it's like the locker room and we talk about mm -hmm. what we're going to be doing. So he said, we're going to be doing a Super Bowl show. We're going to be doing a halftime show. Okay? And everybody's like, oh, man, that's exciting. That's exciting. Kelly, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. Jamie, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. You're going to be doing that. Jim, you're going to be doing it. I'm thinking in my head, you know, I knew it, man. I need me some more you know, stuff, man. And um, once he finishes everybody, he goes, Tommy, you're hosting it. Mm. Because you're the only one that can handle live. Mm. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, new edition. Sorry. 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 Keenan. I know. You know. Anyway, I like new edition. All right. What can I say, man? I, you like it? Just everybody like new edition. Yeah, of course. That's my joint. Sorry, but anyway. Yep. Well, I mean, you changed really sports forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, you could say, I mean, there's been phenomenal Super Bowl halftime shows, but the Michael Jackson Super Bowl halftime show was phenomenal. I, I was there. I, oh, you were there. Guess who I was with? Who? Dennis Rodman. Okay, I've interviewed him. Yeah, Dennis Rodman is my guy. I, I I saw his whole life change. He was with me that week. We went to see Michael Jackson. Uh, and just before Madonna turned him out. Mm. See, because I always tell him that Madonna turned him out. He was just a nice guy because me and John Sally was tight. Okay. And me and John still, still tight. Yeah. But it was Dennis Rodman. We went to the Michael Jackson concert. A week later, after that, 
that's when Dennis was had that episode with his wife and he was thinking about taking his life. Yeah, yeah, me and uh, John actually talked about that. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. He had a shotgun in his car. Yeah, and... that's exactly what happened. And me and him had never hung out together since that moment, but mm. Michael Jackson, and the other greatest performance in Super Bowl history, Bruno Mar. That was a great one. I had never saw him perform before. When I saw Bruno Mars perform, I was all the way. The Usher one was great also. Usher's family, and I think the reason why I have the same love for that, because I toured with them growing up as kids. Mm. So when I see them perform, I'm not as excited. And I think what Bruno Mars did for me, I had never seen him perform. So if I had toured with him 20 years ago, I wouldn't have been impressed. But because I had never seen him perform, and I saw him at the Super Bowl, I was yeah. impressed and I go, whoa. But yes, um, Usher was good, but it didn't excite me the way it would have if I had never seen him before. That's all. 